Hello, my soccer universe. Yeah, crazy man with wild hair having another great sports weekend. Talking to you here about what happened in Serie A. Uh, if you watch my Germany video, yeah, my Packers lost and I'm uh, got it with just added to this weekend, part of which we will talk uh, in this uh, video as well. Well, I'm not necessarily cheery and I think my choice was the Roma jersey. Who of all the teams that I have, at least two jerseys, probably had the best week and it was not a great week for Roma. I think black is again kind of fitting. Um, yeah, if I would have a second Juve jersey and I'm a bit mad at myself because I saw a really nice away jersey. I think it was 13, 14, a yellow one that I decided to forego. Now it would have come in handy. I probably would have worn some Juve. Whatever. Uh, we'll talk about two competitions in here. The one competition I will not talk about is the Supercoppa, uh, because I honestly, to me, it, the Supercoppa is, it's a, I know it's, it, it, it didn't take it way more serious. They play full squads, but I, I cannot take uh, competitions like this serious and then uh, say that there is a, a whole a trophy awarded. I also want to point, point out, and I probably should do a video, I put now I have everything full with uh, star players from uh, yesteryear, although there are a few current ones in there, like Cristiano and Messi, of course. But yeah, now my studio looks kind of all right. <laughs> it's, very, it's very close to where I want it to be. Uh, yeah, so uh, very quickly, so, so we Juve won it 2-0 uh, against Napoli, um, decent performance and uh, Insigne, I think, missed the penalty for Na Napoli, so that's what we have to say. But headlines, uh, it, uh, Roman teams made it not easy in the Coppa Italia. Uh, we had a brilliant Atalanta, although they dropped points in the midweek, uh, brilliant Atalanta against uh, Milan. It has to be said. Um, we also had Inter doing what you always can rely on with Inter, drop points at random games. You were coming back into it and Napoli, despite scoring a very quick goal, losing again and yeah, the title race stays on. Let's start with the Coppa Italia and probably with one of the craziest games you'll ever see and I was actually sort of I, I I did not really really follow it but I then I, and when I wanted want to watch the highlights I see whoa there was a whole lot of things happening it was an absolute crazy game and where Spezia and the other thing is and we will talk about the Roma space Spezia a second game uh, soon both games you can distinguish by the jersey matchup as it was with Milan Torino, which I didn't make. But let's get it. It was a crazy game because Spezia came out, got a penalty in the sixth minute, and then Saponara with a, a nice shot in the 15th made it already 2 0 for um, Spezia, uh, setting up an easy win. However, Roma fight back and uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini penalty puts them level, and then Michitarian gets the equalizer. Roma pushing for the win. Alas, they don't get it and they have to go to extra time. And what then happened in extra time, I honestly, you won't. <laughs> it's, most probably, it's probably the craziest beginning to an extra time period that I can actually re uh, re remember. It is uh, kicked off and then uh, Mancini makes a really stupid foul midfield, gets a second yellow is sent off and right off that free kick the free kick is displayed the Spezia player goes straight on goal and Paul Lopez comes out and mows him down within 30 seconds Roma gets two red cards Unbel unbelievable and of course then uh, yes I actually, actually I think the game was still kind of open niche but Daniel Verde uh, gets the 3-2 the and with Roma trying to push, of course, they're gonna con 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 it was a, a super nice shot by Saponara um, that uh, makes it a 4-2 for Spezia. However, and I leave it as this. Roma made six substitutions, which everywhere will be right, except in the Coppa Italia. You cannot make a sixth substitution 
uh, <laughs> in overtime because you know, they only say five. And so the game had to be actually awarded three nil to Spades here. I keep it here as the four two after over overtime. But it just adds, and this is the second administrative error uh, this season that Roma made. An absolute nuts game. Well worth watching, to be honest, because I mean, how often do we, do we see that within a minute, two players of our same team get sent off? Absolute madness. Uh, Lazio made it made themselves a little bit more trouble than uh, they probably needed. Parolo gives them a lead. They cannot double up in the second half. Actually, Parma was coming and they get the equal to Mihaila late and you think it goes to overtime, but then, um, yeah, Colombic scores an own goal. Also, typically Parma and Lazio goes on to win that one and they, and they move on to the next round. And let's look at this next round because we have already Tuesday, the big one. I mean, Mil Milan Derby between Inter and Milan. Uh, what more do you, do you want? I'm not necessarily happy that it is happens right now. I'm usually very up for a Milan Dar Derby, but um, no. I wish it, wo it was not quite that, that, that way, but you know, uh, the ones in the leagues are definitely more important. We also get Atalanta Lazio for the first time. We get a second time as well this week, and it's uh, weird. This is now the third time we have uh, we had uh, Milan Torino, both the same. We had Roma Spezia, both the same this weekend, and now we get Atalanta Lazio twice uh, in in row as well. Just a little head up, uh, it just boggles my mind a little bit. But that I think is the second best matchup: Juve, Spal, and Napoli Spezia. Yeah, Spezia beat Napoli, uh, but Napoli better get something out of there. Just for the draw, we have the winner of the derby play against Juve Spal and then Atalanta, Lazio, Napoli, Spezia, that's the second semi-final. Let's go to Serie A, where we also had on Wednesday a game between Udine and Atalanta, where Udine are more or less right off the kickoff now. No, it was a little bit more, but it was in the first, first minute through Perea gets the uh, lead and Atalanta really was struggling to get into that game, playing in very weird jerseys, by the way. Uh, but they get the equalizer through Muriel, but Udine really defended well, defended deep. Atalanta also mixing up the lineup a little bit, which didn't really help. So, I mean, uh, it was not until the round of 60 that Zapata, Ilicic and Gosens come on. Uh, so, yeah, I think At Atalanta put everything into the big game against Milan and ends up dropping points. And Udine, in the end, I think could have even snatched the winner uh, with a little bit more luck. But then, speaking of this uh, new round. Before we talk about the Milan uh, Atalanta, Roma Spezia was probably the most entertaining game of the, of, of the week. And again, Roma Spezia. I mean, we just talked talk about this time Spezia playing in blue. And same thing was with uh, when uh, the white one in the cup was just all right. And the same thing was with Milan Torino, where uh, Torino also played uh, in the league. Torino played all, also in the league with this bluish jersey jer and then the cup they play as you would expect with white and red. Well. Whatever. Uh, this one was a lot more in Roma's favor uh, with Maya Ral um, giving them the lead. However, uh, Piccoli very quickly gets an equalizer. Roma, though, clearly the better the team. And after the half, in the 52nd and 55th, uh, gave, uh, get themselves a 3 1 lead. Maya Ral and Car stop scoring that. But then Farias, right uh, four minutes later, puts the game tight again. Roma is having a few chances, namely one of Vere 2 from a very acute angle. And you think they might get it home, but no. Uh, Farias plays it into Verde, a Roma youth player, who slams it home in the 90th, make it 3-3, and you really think, oh, is Roma dropping point points again? And, you know, the birds are already chirping from the roofs that uh, Fonseca is in trouble. Although I find this not... I would keep I would keep Fonseca. I think he has to work. Given all the absence and the way the Roma squad is built and so on, and... I think you should keep Fonseca. Anyway, uh, I think he saved, got, got, got himself a little bit of peace by uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini adding in stoppage time a winner. 4-3 for Roma and they kind of saved their and also not so great week. Um, I was really looking forward to Milan Ad Atalanta. Two teams that, probably the most two intense teams in the league uh, in their playing style. And I think in the first 15 minutes, I saw what I wanted to see uh, with both teams rather even. It was a fight. Yes, Atalanta having a little bit more chances, but I think there were always near misses for Milan as well. But it, it, uh, that was a little bit uh, something, a sign of what was to come because Atalanta was way too physically 
for Milan and Kessie and Tonali never could get a hold of midfield. And uh, once Atalanta took control, and this was around the 15th minute, uh, Milan had a really hard time uh, re responding. It was really hard for them to, uh, even when they got the ball, to retain the ball for more than uh, two passes or, or, or whatever. Also, it didn't help that um, you know they again had a player's meeting like Cialanoglu. Uh, was pro uh, was probably a calming influence, and I still think we need uh, a Benazer in top form would have helped this midfield a whole lot. Uh, I'd rather have Benazer and Kessi, although I really think that uh, Tonali is getting better, but he also needs to find his role in this team still. Yeah, it was uh, it was for me a a tough watch. I mean, there were some there were a few near misses already in the uh, you know. From the 15th to the 20th, uh, 20th or so, uh, it was really, really hard. But then, uh, just when I thought maybe Milan can, can, can escape, no, Gosens may, may, makes Gosens and Romero uh, escapes Kalulu. Uh, was it Kalulu? I think it was Kalulu. Uh, and it's 1 0 Atalanta. And I have to say, it was deserved at that point. And Atalanta kept piling on under pressure. There were a few. Opportunities where Slatan maybe could have snatched a goal with a little bit more luck, you know. If uh, the, 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 but the, the, Romero did an outstanding job on Slatan, I have, I have to say. And as I said, uh, Atalanta outmuscled them. And what Ilicic was doing, their whole game in the first half, whenever Ilicic was on the ball, you could not stop him. I thought that hopefully in the second half. Um, yeah, halftime, Pioli can find some adjustments. I think he did a good uh, change by bringing on Brahim Diaz to get a little bit more spark. And Milan was the initial better in the game, but then they give up a stupid penalty. I think it was Kess here who uh, it was not intended, but he hits with the elbow. Uh, Ilicic in the face. Donnarumma almost saves it. I mean, it goes below here. 2 0, and that was the game. And then, um, finally, uh, Kalulu needed to be saved right. because he also uh, injured himself, so he needed to really get out. Musakio came on, uh, then Rebic and Mandzukic came on for Leo and Castillejo, which I actually would have, in a way, expected to start. I think those two are a little bit more experienced out there. Um, and they, off the get-go, Mandzukic almost would have gotten a goal, and that would have put Milan back in contention. But then Romero plays a great ball to Zapata, 77, it's 3-0 Milan, uh, uh, 3-0 Atalanta, <laughs> Freudian slip. And yeah, they play at home and it could have been more. Uh, Atalanta was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, they're still the highest rated team in, Ser in Serie A, according to 538. Thir um, and I can see why. Uh, they are probably the most complete team. And I have to say, Milan is a good squad and I think uh, I think there's loss hurt, but as we will see, uh, they still remain in first place, and that's the one thing I think. If Milan keeps consistently racking up wins, especially against the smaller opponents, and here, here and there against uh, the big ones too, I think that Milan will probably still finish easy in the Champions League spots. But this was kind of showing. Serie A title might be just a step too far and you had this feeling all the way. I mean, they're still first, they're very resilient. I'm still very positive about this team and probably they will hit a slump here and there. But I actually think that uh, the future is bright for this for, for team. It's just uh, a little bit is missing, especially if an important player, uh, Chala, uh, important player like Charles Noglo and Ben Acerra out against such a machine as Atalanta can be. It's a really, really hard ask. To be honest, but as I say, they remain in first place. I'm for sure thought that Inter is gonna take something, uh, go, uh, gonna get the win in Udine. They had their chances, dominated the game. Never, it was uh, raining, but I watched it. I mean, once it was three 0 uh, for uh, At Atalanta. I switched over to that game because they were at the same time. Actually, the last few minutes, I thought actually that uh, Udine was again slightly the better team, but I watched the highlights. Yes, Inter had chances to win this one, but they were kind of a flat performance. After this great performance against Juve, kind of flat again. Most notably, Conte gets, that, uh, gets sent off and he had a personal duel with Maresca. Sempre tu! Sempre tu, Maresca! And then uh, it was a whole lot of trouble. And yeah, Inter. Typically Inter. You could go uh, level with Milan, um, but no. 
uh, actually, they would not have overtaken because the head to head is still for Milan at the moment. But yeah. Inter. Uh, Fiorentina gets a, for a, ch uh, a change of win. Juve against Bologna was a really, really entertaining game uh, between the two best free kick players in Serie A as coaches, uh, with uh, Mihailovic for Bologna and um, Pirlo for Juve. Arthur gives them the lead, but uh, that shot, I mean, he takes a shot, he slips. And then the shot gets uh, nastily deflected and goes in the internet. But Bologna is a, a team that wants to play with you. And, you know, with Juve, it was a rather op open game with the goalkeepers being the story. I think there was a huge save from Jesny on a Quadrado short-range header. Yes, uh, would have been a great on goal. Um, but also the, the um, uh, Skorupski, the Bologna keeper, made some great, great saves. The game was decided when a Quattorata corner was headed into net by McKenney, who is becoming, I feel, one of the most important players for Juventus. And I think for Juve, tops, uh, caps a top week. I mean, uh, Inter dropping points, Milan losing, um, and Napoli losing and, and so on. Juve coming closer and closer and closer again. You just thought they're out. No, never count Juve out. That's what I want to say. Genoa, huge win in uh, re relegation over Cagliari. I actually saw a Verona Na Napoli and Irving Lozano, I think it was after 11 seconds. And now a really, really, really fast, fast goal, scoring the 1-0. And at that point, Na uh, Napoli should have doubled, doubled up, but uh, Verona got back into the game. Di Marco equalizes. In the second half, it was a tight affair, going back and forth. It could have gone either way, but it is then Barak who finds the breakthrough for Verona and then Sakani adds at that point actually I have to say Napoli broke um, and then when Sakani make, makes 3-3-1 three, three, there was no come coming back Napoli also no, not looking all the great I unfortunately didn't see much of Lazio Sassuolo which was probably another uh, no, nominal big game it was a 2-1 win for Lazio uh, I haven't seen it Caputo gives Sassuolo the lead Milinkovic Savic equalizes and Immobile gets the winner so a uh, big win for Lazio too and then Sampdoria move up and the expected standings uh, ahead of Parma. So let's look at the standings. It's the halfway point. The only thing that's missing is this uh, Juve-Napoli game. I thought the Super Cup could have doubled up. I know why the Italian FA probably doesn't want to do it, but I think with all the fixture congestion, double it up, make this the game, and this would have actually given Juve a boost and they would have moved into third uh, spot here. But yeah, we still have Milan, uh, only two points ahead of Inter, but still, uh, Inter firm favorites. I have to say, uh, head and my model tell me that Inter are the favorites. My heart says, of course, Milan. My gut says somewhat Juventus. I'm not giving up on Juventus yet, although they are very, very, very uneven. Uh, especially if you... Um, nah, let, let's look first. I mean, champ, champs next spot. Uh, Roma is out. It's really Atalanta, Juve, Inter, Milan, who are now favored for the Champions League. Roma and Napoli may or may probably not get in there. Lazio, uh, very, very outside chance. Although Lazio is now in touch with those spots and Lazio is at least a well-functioned team. On the bottom also... Calgary and Parma. I don't want to lose to those Austro jerseys. I need to get more jerseys then. Uh, well, that's not a bad thing. Uh, and Crotone look in bad shape. Uh, Torino with the win and Genoa with the win. Uh, gave, give themselves a little bit of a breather. Uh, let's adjust the table and we see Juve actually is, uh, if you just for those games, in third spot. So, um, yeah, it looks like the big three. Juve actually quite on track if you look at the last col uh, column. Uh, Milan still having a positive, but not, is there not the most positive uh, uh, surprise anymore? That actually is at the moment Hellas, uh, somewhat surprisingly. The big disappointment is Torino. I think Fiorentina needs to be also in there. Uh, Fiorentina should be way much up there. And Atalanta, although doing great, uh, as they are so highly rated, they should be higher up. As I said, expected standings, we have... This is what the head tells me, Inter, although you never know with Inter uh, because they always have the capacity to, to mess it up. Milan, Juve, kind of neck to neck at, at the moment, and Atalanta right behind. Those are the four teams that my model would project at the moment into the Champions League. Napoli, Roma, also neck to neck. Lazio, maybe on the outside looking in. Then the midfield, I think Sassol and Hellas, they, you can really see they're hitting a little bit of a wall. Then there's the tier with Sampdoria, Fiorentina, which should be fine. 
but will not challenge probably for Europe. Then midfield, Uli Bologna, uh, Bologna, Benevento is a lower midfield. And I think then we start relegation zone with Spezia, Genoa, Torino, and as I said, Cali, Parma, and Crotone are the ones that look worst. Uh, we already talked Coppa Italia. What's the next round? A uh, huge relegation matchup in a way, Torino and Fiorentina. Uh, this is the return leg from the first round. Uh, Bologna, Milan will be a tough game, I think, for Milan because Bologna is, uh, well, you know, could be an interesting one. Atalanta Lazio is the, I think, the big name matchup in here. And uh, don't underestimate Roma against Hellas. Remember, first round, Roma fielding an ineligible player, blah, 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 blah. Well, that was it from this weekend, as I said. Not my favorite weekend uh, at all, but at least we had some exciting things still to talk about, uh, more on the madness scale than anything else. Let me know what you thought about this round. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.